I won't necessarily support it. And that's kind of how it went. I availed them to the best of teachers and uh, would take them up to hear different groups up in L.A. and what have you. And then they just both ran with it. You know, just unbelievable. I'm so proud of both of them because they're both doing so well even now. Oh, yeah. You know, when I led the Disneyland band uh, up and down Main Street, they would come out during the summer. I would bring them out there with me every day. They would sit in the band and play their little fake drum and their little whatever and uh, as if they were the musicians in that band. They hung out with the band in the band room, and, and they kind of just, like, osmosed into, into being musicians. They couldn't get away from it. So, so it all quite... worked great. It worked just like it should work, you know. I'm yeah. sure that in, in this incarnation, this is what they, they should be doing, and they're both doing great at it. Thank you, Evan. So, so let me ask you, because in the Pythagorean theory, um, the drummer is the first chakra, and it is, you know, it's where our it's where our first um, awareness of dreaming comes about, which is in utero. It is also the one that, you know, gives us a sense of direction, and it's the first seven years of life. So how did you have the inspiration that he would have the potential to be a great world-class drummer? You know, he and the drummer in the Disneyland band, a a guy named John White, John kind of took him under his shoulder, under his wing, and would let Josh sit next to him down there in town square. And so mm-hmm. Josh, you know, kind of had, that was his buddy. And, uh, and he just ended up liking the drums because John played drums. And next thing you know, uh, you know, he's, he's got a practice pad and, and then he's practicing and driving us all crazy. So we really didn't know for sure uh, what he was going to do, but, it's like I said, I decided I would avail them to all the opportunity. If they took it, great. And if they didn't, I was fine with that, too. So it just worked like it should in this incarnation. So I know this is kind of like politically maybe incorrect, but are you okay with telling our audience who your your um, son is today? Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's fine. Uh, Josh... Uh, up until all of this, but Josh has been playing uh, drums with Sting uh, for 10 years. Uh, they had naturally their tours all canceled. And <laughs> Jason plays with two or three different groups. Uh, and, and uh, you know, and their tours are all canceled too. One of them is uh, Green Day that he uh, has worked with as, uh, as, you know, a musician, as a keyboard player. And, um, of course, their tours are canceled also. Everybody's tours are canceled. All the yeah. musicians and entertainers right now are really struggling because everything yeah. has fallen out from underneath them. You know, this is it, crazy times. Yeah. Just crazy. But so, thank heavens they both saved their money. Good. And good, thank good. heavens both their wives work, you know. <laughs> so the wives okay, have a great it? job. You know, Amy's a, a college teacher and Nicole's a real estate broker. And, and uh, you know, so they do really well which is great. If you're going to be a professional musician, you better hope that your wife makes some money. <laughs> if, you're going to be an lines, you know, if you're going to be an artist, rough times. if you're going to be an artist of any sort, you had better marry a woman who can produce an income because you just don't know. <laughs> yeah, so, you don't Suzanne, know. You're can right. you hear me? Yes. Okay. There's a, a surprise guest. That what? would like to see if uh, Stan can remember him, and he wants oh. to prompt him on a memory. He's worked at Disney for about 37 years. His initials are KK, but Stan, are you ready for a surprise guest? No, no. KKK <laughs> from the KKK? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I'm ready. Let's do All it. All right. All right, let's do it. All right. Okay. Stan, hi. Who is it? Go ahead. It's Kevin Kimmel. How are you, Stan? Hey, Kevin. Great, man. Hey, man. How are you? Good to hear your voice. Good. I know. It's been a while. I, uh, I saw you post on Facebook, and I was just listening and thought, let me call in, because I, I, um, I, I heard a story. There was a security guard that worked at Disney at, the, at Harbor Gate at the employee entrance for many oh, years. Yeah. His name was Ben. 
And, yeah. and for those that, that don't know, he was a ex marine, as I recall. And this guy yep. would fly the book. And uh, yeah. And so they wanted to make yeah. sure that people weren't taking things out of the park that weren't theirs. And so right. you had to, you had to open the bag for some guys and some guys were very inconsistent. This guy was very consistent and, and he would check you on the way in. He wanted to, to do all, you know, do all kinds of stuff. That was just right. a, a big, big pain in the butt. And I, if I remember correctly, Stan, you might have a really good story about uh, walking under that train trestle there at the employee entrance that involves ping pong balls. <laughs> yeah. No golf balls. Yeah. So golf what we did better. is we hit, yeah, we had Howie Price fill his trumpet case with about a hundred golf balls. And so he's getting ready to, you know, uh, uh, those of you that are Disney employees will know that when you come in by Harbor gate, you have to walk down underneath the railroad tracks. Anyhow. So uh, the guy says to Howie every day. Now, Howie's been there 25 years by this time. Naturally, he's not stealing anything, but the guy makes him open the case. So Howie says once again, well, okay, opens it up and all of these golf balls come rolling out. People are tripping over them. They're falling over them. They're, and naturally, I'm just in, in total hysterics. But, uh, yeah, that was that, that was that golf ball thing. And I'll tell you another funny one. Uh, the band for my birthday, for my, birthday uh, my first year there, okay, so I'm trying to be really cool and really buy the books. And, and uh, so they baked me a birthday cake, but it was loaded, if you know what I mean. And I didn't know that. Uh, I found out later as I had a couple of pieces before the concert, you know, that, that actually, and they were all, everybody was, everybody knew that I was eating my birthday cake and that it was loaded except me, all the other groups in the park. And so sometimes for the concert, I walk over there and now I got the giggle. And so I get up on stage, I turn around to introduce the band and I'm laughing so hard, I cannot introduce the band. Well, now, they get scared. They're playing the van. Do, 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 do. And I'm supposed to come in and say, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the wonderful world of, of Disney, the musical world of Disney, blah, blah, blah. Well, I get laughing so hard, I can't make that introduction. So now the band's nervous. They're playing this ramp. I'm not doing anything. And they're going, now what the hell do we do? So finally, Howie Price, uh, trumpet player, stood up from the back of the band and kicked off the band into that first song. Well, so I had that cake and I had to get it out of the park. So I, I walked right by all the security guards with this birthday, this loaded birthday cake. If for some reason somebody had, uh, you know, tipped the hat, I would have been, they, there's a thing around there about a thousand reasons Stan Free should have been fired. This was one of them. You know, uh, this is one of those stories where if I'd have been caught doing that with that marijuana laced cake, there could have been some real trouble. You know, really trouble. <laughs> oh, that's so that's good. the cake story. Yeah. Kevin, yeah. Kevin, tell tell us who, what you did at Disneyland, so we have an idea of who you are. Oh, I I was a, a sound engineer. I mixed sound at various stages. I worked at one stage for twelve years and. In fact, Stan's uh, Josh. He was just talking about Josh, the drummer. His, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, it was probably his first band. He, it was a pretty successful band there at the park. It was a boy band before there were boy bands. And uh, so anyway, so I mixed sound at the park, and um, for I was there for thirty, yeah, 30, like you said, thirty-seven years. So um, so anyway, so I I got you know, Stan from a long time ago. Here's here. This is a great opportunity for me to talk about sound men. Okay. Sound men are so important, way yeah. more important than people give them credit for. Because a good sound man can make you sound great, and a bad sound man can make you sound horrible, even if you're great. And Kevin was the great one. And, you know, they so often don't get the credit they deserve because they're in the background running the board. But, man, they can make or break you. And Kevin was, oh, I was always happy when I saw that Kevin was going to be mixing me or if I was the band or mixing polo uh, because we knew it was going to be good. <laughs> I, and I'll say this, most of the sound men at Disney are really great. We're lucky. We're blessed out there to have really good sound technicians because without that, you're dead, man, dead. 
You know, exactly. so there you go. A big round of applause for you, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, Thanks. Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Good talking to you. you. Are you going to go? Are you all done? No, not necessarily, no. Oh, yeah, hang okay, out. We've got Scott Wolf here. Scott's been Scott here Wolf. the whole time. Oh, hi, he was the one on the one. So, folks, if you want to be on the show, be sure and let the producer know, because <laughs> when you're blocked, I can't get <laughs> So he's one of those fancy people, your friend Scott Wolf. So I couldn't see his numbers, but he said next Sorry. time he'll unblock his phone just for me. So I'm going to put Mr. Kimmel on hold because uh, if I have too many lines, we get a lot of feedback. So, okay. uh, Mr. Kimmel, if you'll stick around, uh, I don't know if you know Mr. Wolf, but let's see what Mr. Wolf has to say because he was our invited guest. And uh, well, let, me, let me introduce. Let me yeah. Let me introduce Scott. Uh, Scott. Okay. Uh, is the one that wrote the book with me, uh, The Music, Mayhem, and the Mouse. And Scott is a Disney, I would call him a Disney historian. He's like one of the guys, one of the few guys that we go to uh, there in our division if we need specifics about what did Walt wear Thursday, July 14th in 1958. Scott would know that. Scott knows everything Disney and Disneyland. And uh, so it was really fun to have him work with me on this book uh, because he is the quintessential uh, expert on so many things Disney, you know. So there's your introduction, Scott. Welcome to the show. It was a red hat and a blue sweater and short. No, I have no idea what he wore on that day. Hey, Stan. Yeah, Yeah, right. Yeah, Scotty. (laughs) I've been enjoying the show. I'm I'm sorry that I have to interrupt it. I've been enjoying listening to you. No, well, great. (laughs) <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad you're on there, yeah. So I'm excited about the book, and I, I don't know, this might be the first time that people are hearing about it, but gosh, did I love listening. I don't know if they know, what is it, a, at least a couple years of getting together and you just telling me every story and me trying to pick your brain as much as I can, but I'm really excited people are hearing some of the stories now and they're going to get to hear some more. Oh, please tell me I'm not out. Am I still on? You're, you're on. You're on. You're on. So okay. Steve, okay. So okay. Good. <laughs> Steve, Steve, tell us one of your. Thank you for joining us. It's really yeah. nice to have you. Sorry for the technical glitch. No problem. And, and, problem. and when Kevin Kevin was going out the door, and I wanted to add that I've seen productions, and uh, I didn't have any idea of what the talent was, but then I saw somebody pulled up from the audience, and the sound man made that person in the audience sound good and that was my first time realizing that if you have a good sound man you can pull off any sort of a miracle but i want to hear you steve tell us about one of your favorite stories as a disney historian i want to hear i want to hear what you have to say is your favorite i want to know your favorite oh there's a ton and um uh, Stan, is, I, I interviewed Stan years ago, and he's a baby, you know, because a lot of the people I've interviewed, well, so many are no longer around um, because they worked with Walt Disney and people who started there in the 1930s and 40s. One of my favorite days of Disney might be the day I actually met Stan. Um, I have Now, going back, I knew of Stan. I've seen Stan. I used to go to Disneyland. I used to see him conducting his own big band, so... You know, a lot of the special events that I've got to, I do a lot of photography, so a lot of the events that I got to photograph when I was working for Disney, even though that wasn't my main job, uh, there would be Stan. He'd be at an ambassador ceremony and conducting the band. And, and he, I, I don't know, Stan, I think you were doing talent booking and still conducting the band. Is that right? I, I don't know mm-hmm. if, if he can hear me. But um, for the ambassador ceremonies or Disney legend ceremonies and things like that, but in 2007... I was asked by the Disney Studios to produce a show to uh, to celebrate the life of Fulton Burley. And Fulton was an, a Disney entertainer. He was in the famous Golden Horse Review, which was – it's actually in the Guinness Book of World Records for having more live performances than any other stage show. And that was a wow. show that was at Disneyland from 1955, um, it, the opening of Disneyland, until 1986. And Fulton – joined the show in 1962, and he was there until the last performance. So when he passed away, they hired me to do a tribute. We did it over at the Disney Studios. And I had some, just a few people I knew with the show, and I would call them and say, who needs to come to this celebration for Fulton? 
and uh, one of them was 